and I'm here to do a product review with Arteza. I am an affiliate with Arteza and this product was sent to me free and if you purchase this product I will receive a small commission for recommending you. I will put a link down in the description box below and for the first 30 days when this video go live you will have a discount so use the coupon code that I'm going to put on the screen as well as put in the description box below. So let me tell you what I ordered from Orteza. So I like Orteza because they have very great packaging. They have packaging as far as their shipping and then they also have amazing packaging for their actual product itself like the actual package, packaging of the product. So this box actually came in a larger box. They actually shipped through Amazon Prime. Comes very quick. And what I actually ordered was a 28 count canvas and I have seven each size 6x6, six 8x8, six, eight 10x10, eight, 10 10, and 12x12. 12 12. And these also are available in rectangular sizes as well, but I am using the squares. I thought that these would be great for putting sample designs or if I'm having a vendor booth listing particular information that's on sale or the type of products or services that I am offering. So I'm going to go ahead and open this box up and then I will also tilt the camera down at that point. So I do have the product out of the box. And I do love how it's packaged and I like that these are the thinner canvas without the wooden frames on them because they're much thinner, especially for what I want to do with them. I just basically want to maybe use some kind of ribbon so that I can have hangers or add some style of hangers to this so that I can actually hang these when I'm actually in a booth. I'm not sure exactly yet, but I do love what's in the package. So let's talk about the sizes and we'll go from the largest to the smallest. Again, we have 28 canvas in this kit and the first size is 12 by 12. So the same size as a standard finished quilt block, which is pretty nice. The next size, which they do have labels on them, are 10 by 10. And I will open up the smallest one. And then we have 8 by 8. And then our last pack is 6 by 6. And these are actually 7 of each kind. Additional information is that these are 100% cotton. They're 8 ounce primed and they are four ounces unprimed and let's see if it's any more it says Arteza's canvas surface is ready for any kind of oil and acrylic paint and other wet or dry media our classic grade canvas panels are the perfect choice for light paint applications practice studies and class projects and I'm glad they said practice because I have no idea what it is that I'm going to be doing. I plan to try to use these as I told you before as mock-ups of what I'm selling. So like if I have a t-shirt, I would like to have like a little mini version on these little panels. And then I can use those to put inside of my booth. So I don't, and I can already have my t-shirts pre-packaged, ready to go, and then they just get the actual t-shirt without me having to have a garment rack is my goal. <laughs> 
so we have our canvases in the pack and like i said we have this six by six here so i'm just going to go ahead and open one on the back here i'm gonna try to cut I don't want to cut through the canvas, but I want to um, see what the quality is on here. So I think when they're talking about what's primed and not primed, maybe the front is primed and the back is not primed. So you have your sticker on the back and then here's your canvas surface. I just want you to see that. And then I will also lay it down. So it looks just like 100% um, canvas with, uh, you know, that's normal standard, but not the one with the wood on the back. And I like these because I thought the pricing for how many of them that were included in the package was really good and I'm not gonna put any pricing because sometimes prices change as people are watching videos so I don't want to say what the price is today but I will put a link to the product down in the description box so if you're interested please click on the description box below and I will also leave you a discount code so now I'm going to go resize one of my printouts to fit on this 6x6 six six canvas or maybe I should do one on an 8x8 canvas because 6x6 is going to be pretty small for a detailed one. And I'm not sure which one I want to do yet. So let's go for an 8x8 canvas because I do want to leave some kind of a margin around it as well. So we're going to open up an 8x8 instead. <laughs> so this size I kind of like. So I'm going to go ahead and do a sample on here and I will come back once I have my cut product ready for the heat press. I'm back and I have cut my designs out and now I want to talk about Arteza's heat transfer vinyl. I have a packet here that has 22 different colors and they are 10 by 12 inches and I made a separate video for this as well so I'm just going to go ahead and insert that video here so you can see me unbox this product as well hi it's T with T quilts and I know I told you in another portion of this video that I had already recorded the Ortiz's vinyl video but for some reason i have seemed to have lost that footage so i am going to now insert it here but i wanted to show you how their vinyl how their heat transfer vinyl comes packaged and i want to show you the colors that are included so let me point you down so arteza's vinyl comes packaged in a flat container instead of being rolled and i do like that for storage as well because it keeps everything nice and neat. And then I just want to show you on the back of this one where it has all of the various different colors as well. So it's actually 22 sheets of heat transfer vinyl and they're calling it the premium brand. And it's the application for this vinyl is a little different. Always test cut to make sure your machine settings are set up correctly. Cut your design on the white side of the sheet and weed away any excess material that is not part of your design. Make sure that your fabric, make sure that the fabric you are using is wrinkle free and ready for application. Place your design's white size face down on the fabric. Protect your design by covering with a Teflon sheet or another suitable material before applying heat. Heat press at 300 to 320 for 10 to 15 seconds. And with another brand of vinyl, it's like 305 is your heat source. So you do need to have it just a little bit higher. I always like to go in the middle of the recommendation. So I would try 310. And then it says allow to fully cool before separating the film. And then enjoy your design. And that's a little different from the normal brands too. Some brands will have you do a cold peel and some a warm peel and some a hot peel. So you need to know how your vinyl peel is in order to 
use the product appropriately. So Arteza's colors, I am going to take this out. I had already opened this because I did a recording and thought that I had everything, but I can't find the video. Now, one thing I do want to note is that on some of these, they say it has a white backing, but that's not true on all of the colors. Most of the colors have a white sheet on the back. So I do want to make sure that you know, like on the black, it's not a white sheet. Okay. On the gray, also, there isn't a white sheet. So let's see what the colors are. I don't know if I've moved these out of order or if they did, but I think that this one is a neon pink. It's got three different pinks. It's got a regular pink, a fuchsia, and a neon pink. And this is very neon-y to me, so I'm going to say that's a neon pink. This one is sky blue. We have silver or gray. golden yellow orange this is maroon lemon yellow so one is a this is silver the other one was gray this is silver this one is gold, royal blue, neon orange, neon green, white. This is pink. This is beige or no, this is camel brown. And let me find beige for you. This is beige. Got red. This is neon, not neon pink. This is fuchsia pink. This one is aquamarine, black, burgundy, and green. So I am going to go cut out my project. So welcome back and thank you so much for watching the insert that I just added. I wanted to show you that I have my pieces printed out and it is important to note that Arteza's vinyl is a cold peel vinyl and it needs to be heated at a temperature of three, between 320 degrees for 10 to 15 seconds. So if you're using like another brand of heat transfer, this will melt very well with that so you don't have to worry. You won't have any concerns with that. So I'm going to put this sewing machine with the words, don't worry, be scrappy, and this scissors onto this canvas. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut this off of my big piece. I decided to do this in black and green. When I actually do this, my scissors and the part that I have in green, my words, are normally in a printed vinyl but I don't want to waste my printed vinyl funds, so I'm just going to do it in plain. And then people can see through the packages what type of designs I have. Because they're going to be different colors, and I don't want to make one for every colorway that I'm going to be doing. So I thought that I would just do one in this colorway, and we will call it a day. Now on my scissors, I'm going to be putting that down at the same time that I'm putting down some of the be scrappy part 
So I'm going to go ahead and trim a little bit around my scissors just so that I don't have a whole lot of excess vinyl hanging out. <laughs> You don't have to do a whole lot. You don't even have to do as much as I'm doing. It's really just the bottle, bottom handle that might run into the words. But I thought that I would just trim it out just a little bit. And whenever I'm layering vinyl and I'm not putting it all down at the same time because of the release paper being, of it, being there. Then like this is a knockout of that's on the sewing machine so I can't put this down at the same time that I put the actual sewing machine down and so I like to just go ahead and trim out in case something might accidentally overlap so I'm going to go ahead and cut the don't worry be scrappy part out because I'm going to put the don't worry over the top and the be scrappy is going on the bottom so, I will now meet you at the heat press. So, what I like to do is just fold these in half. And then once I get my little fold lines, I find sometimes I lose those. So, I'll just put a little nick. And actually, since these are just test things that I'm not actually sewing, it's not as critical to find center. But this is what I would do if I was actually on a shirt. So, I'm just going to eyeball center here. And I do have a ruler here that I can also use to make sure that I'm kind of in center. We're going to just go ahead and put our letters on top. So again, I'm going to fold in half. I try to make sure that my letters are lining up on the bottom if it's a straight line. And then when I get to the end, I want to make sure the Y ends where the tail's on my B end. And then I'll just press. Once I press, again, I just like to put a little nick in it so that I don't lose it. Just in case, I can always lift up the little nick. Make sure you don't cut through your vinyl. And then I'm going to do that same process again with the top lettering. So I kind of got the nicks here so I can line up these nicks and things should be pretty good. And so I'm just going to lift up just a little bit. And on my shirt, I actually have it a little bit closer. I have this pulled down a little more, but that won't matter. I'm just making this a little bit different, but it's not going to matter when I actually do the shirt. And I'm going to do the same thing with the B scrappy. I'm just going to pull it down. And there we have it. Because I have the sewing machine that I'm also putting down and I have my scissors, I'm actually going to press for just two to three seconds. And then remember, we're using Orteza's vinyl, so I can't do a peel right away. I've got to wait for it to cool. I also have a Teflon mat. Let me zoom you out a little bit. On top that I have just attached to the underside of my base here has a Teflon mat sheet on it so I'm gonna go ahead and press that for a few seconds maybe five seconds since I have a cold peel because I want to make sure it work and so now I'm just going to let that cool might be a good idea to take it off you can also like touch it with something that's cooler than what it is so I'll just use my heat glove because it doesn't have any heat in it to absorb some of the heat. So it's ready to peel. I've done like a test and it seems like only particular areas are not staying down like inside of my scissors. Everything else on the black is laid down. 
This bottom part is not laid down completely. So maybe if I turn it around, maybe. If I turn this around on the press, maybe that will help. Okay, so now we need to wait for it to cool again. So I'm back and my pieces were ready to be peeled. So I went ahead and peeled the black off because that's the one that I was most concerned about. So I feel like my ladders should be okay. So let's try those now. So I just had to get a start. And again, this is my first time working with this type of product. And it's not going to be sold. It's actually just going to be like some demos of what I have available, like the designs that I have. And then people can see the shirts and the packages to know what particular colorways I have. So, and again, this vinyl is a cold peel. So I have to wait a few minutes in between. Okay, so now that we have this part, I now need to add the scissors on. So let me zoom you back in. And I need to place these scissors into this knockout design that I've created here. And the problem here is that vinyl, when it's heated it, and you have a knockout and you have to heat it for longer than the two or three seconds, it kind of changes its size. So I'm glad that this is just a sample. So I'm going to try to leave a little bit of white, the little, the smallest amount as possible. And then I'm going to aim that scissor up. So I didn't do too bad of a job. It just takes a little time to practice with this. So I normally would cover this, but since I already have my Teflon sheet, when you're working with a cool press, you never want to press hot twice in a row. And so now I'm just going to go ahead and do one more press on this. Use my glove. I just put it on top. And then I just lay my hand on top. I don't even wear the glove. So that was for 15 seconds. And I normally would not let this whole thing sit on here. So I would love to get this off so that I don't have an impression. But I knew it wasn't going to peel unless I pressed it hard because I'm working on the canvas. So, this is it for our design. You can see where I have indentations from the vinyl because I had to leave it on. Because this wasn't working on this surface for me to do the two or three second tack. So I'm back and I'm going to try to do this again. I had some difficulty with pressing the other one. And so I wanted to do another sample board. I have I'm an Illinois quilter and so I want to do that and see if I can get it to press a little better so because I had some difficulty with pressing the other board and this is my first time doing it and I think it may be better if I was to seal my board but I'm not going to do that right now because it would have to dry before I can move on but I'm going to use a piece of parchment paper on top and so this sample board is an I'm an Illinois quilter. And so I am going to add a piece of parchment on top to protect my Teflon sheet. And also so that I don't mark up the white background. So I'm going to go ahead and get this placed on the board. 
And again, these are samples, so they don't have to be exact. Right there is about a good position. Let you see that. And let me zoom out just a little bit. Because I'm going to probably have to place this board in the center. And then I'm going to put a piece of parchment on top to cover the entire board because the film from my vinyl is not as big as the board. So I'm going to do that. And I can't like clamp this, but I'm going to put pressure on the press. And this vinyl is a cold peel vinyl, so I'm going to have to wait for it to completely cool off before I can go on. And it'll beep. So that was 20 seconds with just manual pressure. And now I need to wait for this to completely cool, so I'll come back when it's finished. So we're going to see if I can get this to peel off. It has just a little bit of heat on it, but I didn't want to wait for it to completely cool in the event that I have to repress it again. So let's just start at one corner and see what we got. So let's see if it's attached to the board. And it's attached to the board at the top, but not at the bottom. I'm no, I don't know if you can see that where it's not attached at the bottom. So let's try the upper corner because maybe I just need to rotate it. So I'm gonna try to use a vinyl pick to see if I can get underneath. Okay. So it looks like it's all sealed at the top. It's just the bottom part. So what I'm going to do is rotate this around, put it back into the heat press. I'm going to cover it back up with my parchment sheet and I'm now going to press for 20 more seconds. And then I'm going to let this completely cool. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the camera here and then I will come back. So now we're ready to see if it is stuck to the board. So again, I'm going to use my vinyl weeder to lift up and then just peel back. And it sticks perfectly. That's wonderful. So yeah, I'm going to love using these canvas boards. Again, these are the flat canvas boards from Marteza and they make great product display boards so I am going to continue to make these I'm not vending anywhere until like September but I am just in the process of getting ready for that and thinking of things that I can do for my booth thank you all so much for watching please thumbs up this video please invite your friends to my YouTube channel and I do have some fabric some scrap fabric hauls videos for you as well. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.